When it comes to comedy films, there's a tendency to rely on some big comedian playing a wild character or an absurd story that sounds good on paper. But the truth is, that's not enough to make a great comedy film. It all comes down to editing. Let's start with the rule of three. With the rule of three, you're creating a pattern. You do something twice, you set the expectation, and then the third time you change directions and you surprise the audience. Therein lies the joke. Okay, check this out, the love guru. Here we have a scene where our character is meeting three fans. They're trying to cram so much in here that the rule of three gets lost. And by the third celebrity, you're neither surprised or amused. Mariska Hargate, Guru Pitta. Mariska Hargate. Mariska Hargate. <laughs> as awful as this scene is, it could have been helped by using the rule of three. They could have shortened the first two cameos to just one line each, and then had the third one play out explaining the full joke. With the rule of three, it needs to be clear that the first two bits are completely different than the third. Here's a look at how you can do it the right way. What's this? Dragon fruit. What's this? A kiwano or horned melon. What's this? A peach. I knew that. Now let's look at landing punchlines. It should be the biggest laugh of the scene. Let's look at another example. The Love Guru, again. Because it's that awful. It's a bad movie. Guys, it's the worst. Okay, so they set up the joke. Uh, do you think Grande saw us? Of course not, Rajneesh. We are completely hidden by this bush. And then they hit the punchline. <laughs> but then they keep going. This may go badly. Keep the elephant running. The dialogue after the punchline is not funny. And in fact, it diminishes the joke. If they had cut after the reveal of the elephant, they would have landed the scene on the biggest bang instead of fizzling out. You don't need five punchlines, you need one. Pick one, cut there, and move on. Now let's look at an example from Young Frankenstein. And it was you who left my grandfather's book out for me to find. Yes! So that I would... Yes! Then you and Victor were... Yes! Yes! Say it! Heave us! My boyfriend! The escalation of the edits leads us to the punchline, the pacing isn't muddled, and the joke is clear. Pick your punchline and build to it. Now sometimes a joke can play out with a simple visual reveal. You see this most often with parody films. Films that spoof specific genres, like Shaun of the Dead, The Naked Gun, Robin Hood Men in Tights. In these sorts of genres, you're playing by the rules of the genre you're spoofing. But because it's comedic, you need to adjust the timing of the scene so that the familiarity of the genre has long enough to sink in before it's uprooted to reveal the joke. Look at this scene from Tropic Thunder. Typical action movie, good guy is captured by the bad guy and taken to the leader. The scene is cut in a way to avoid the reveal until the last possible moment. It builds the intensity, plays into the genre, and then the joke is revealed. I am trapped. You are trespassing my poppy fields. Or look at this simple transition with a reveal. We see the ship crossing the screen. It feels like Star Wars at first, but then keeps going and going and going long enough for you to finally realize that this is not Star Wars. And then the bumper sticker is revealed. By holding back on revealing the joke of a scene, you allow the audience to sink into the film before disrupting them with the reveal. It's kind of like being a magician. You're distracting them so far away from the jokes that when it finally hits, it's a surprise. Comedy is contrast, and jump cuts are the best way to create contrast. 
take two completely opposite things and jump from one to the next. The stronger the contrast in visual and audio, the stronger the laugh. Okay, let's check out Step Brothers. <laughs> Maybe you don't go down that way anymore. Maybe they attempt this technique, way. but the overlapping audio diminishes the impact. If they had cut cold to quiet, it would have been a lot more effective. And quite frankly, we didn't need to see him lick the poo either. If they had cut a second before the climax, it would have been a lot more effective. They attempt this again later in the film, but the problem here is they go from a wide to a wide. Oh, yeah. oh. Oh. If they had cut from the dad's close-up straight to the car, it would have created more contrast and the silence would be funny. Like in Nacho Libre. This is effective because they cut a second before the climax of the screen. The visual and audio are the complete opposite. The more contrast you can create between the two shots you're cutting between, the better. Make it clear, be clean, be obvious. Big to small, loud to quiet action to stillness. Lastly, reaction shots. Sometimes all you need is a cold look to land a joke. Office Space is great at using reaction shots. The boss delivers some good news. The employees stand there staring. Oh, and remember, next Friday is Hawaiian shirt day. So, you know, if you want to, go ahead and uh, wear a Hawaiian shirt and jeans. The reaction shot is the punchline of the joke. Some scenes wouldn't be funny without a well-placed reaction shot. Let's look at another scene from Office the Space. Guy's entire catalog. Anyway, let's get down to business, Michael. You know, you, you can just call me Mike. Hanging on dry, cold looks reiterates the stupidity in dialogue. And honestly, if you have a bin full of solid reaction shots, you can really sell a scene that would otherwise be humorless. So there you go. At the end of the day, if it doesn't make you laugh, it probably won't make anyone else laugh. So feel out the jokes and when in doubt, get weird with it. Because as an editor, finding the funny is up to you.